Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on my channel. I'm Adam and this is summer is the Battle of the Beast special summary of round two. Now, um a couple months ago I made a Battle of the Beast specials who will win video where I went through all of the 24 specials at the time and um mentioned their strengths and weaknesses and who what I think they would, how well I think they'll do, and who I think would win. Now, two rounds have gone past in that time, and all but seven beasts remain. So, we're now down to the final seven beasts. Um, looking at it, it's quite a good amount, quite a good, fair amount of beasts, well, fair amount of beasts, is a good batch of beasts. All of these beasts I could see being worthy of making it this far. One, I would say, is a bit questionable. But um, they all fought hard to make it here. Some more than others. Um, if you know what I mean. One of them skipped round two. And, um, yeah. Uh, I am just going to quickly walk away from the camera. Because I need to get my uh, iPad. So then I can say... Who they want, who they beat, and who they didn't beat. So I'll be right back. Okay, shouldn't take too long. Yeah, shouldn't take too long at all. And I have got it. Boom. Okay. Um. So, don't keep the light out. Light stays out. Okay. Okay. Light can stay out. Okay. So um. Okay. Just. Yeah. Okay. So. We're going to go through these num numerically, which is a bit harder to do because they don't have numbers. So, um, uh, but this is the order in which they were released. So, first up, we have Spyros the Ghost Phoenix. Spyros, in round one, um, was the Slayer of Tempera. And in round... Oh, hold on. Oh, okay, in round one was the Slayer of Arax, and in round two, the Slayer of Tempera. That makes a bit more sense, because I was about to say, I'm pretty sure Tempera won round one, didn't he? And uh, she did, she did. She bo she bought, she beat in Skolo. So yes, Byros um, was able to beat uh, Tempera and Arax. Now, Arax, not really surprising, because it is just a giant bat. But Tempera, um... Clearly, it's how the fight went out. But if the fight was presented now, I reckon Tempera could have won. So, Spyros, I think, got a lucky break there. But, um, I th personally, I think Spyros is reaching the end of her rope. I think if she goes against the right opponent, she may make it to the next round. But it will be very close, though. But, um, I really don't want to see Spyros die. Um, unfortunately though, it's Battle of the Beasts. I have to see, I have to be fair. And, um, Spyros, unfortunately, even though I love you, I really do love it. Um, I don't think she's going to win. Um, in all respects, so Spyros is a great book, but... I honestly don't see her winning. Um, but she's done well to make it this far. She's part of the final seven. And she's one of that. She's one of those books of the final seven. Which I will actually remember made it to the final seven. Because um, the last two especially. I keep forgetting made it to the final seven. <laughs> okay so up next we have um, Cressa the Winged Terror. In round one, Cressa was the destroyer of Kragos and Kildor. And in round two was the lucky beast that skipped round two. Uh, skipped the fight. So, um, really, Cressa lucked out there. But um, I think, let's say if Spyros skipped round two, uh, Cressa would have probably gone against Tempera, which... I think would have been all right. I reckon Chrysler would do all right against that. If, uh, let's say, um, another beast, let's say 
Ferric skipped round two. Um, Kreta might have a bit of a tougher time against the opponent Ferric had, which was Verac. Um, but Kreta, I think, would have done fine in round two. But I am kind of glad to see her make it through, as um, I actually really like Bug Beasts. And um, even though this isn't my favourite beast, it still it still is a good um, good read, good fight, and um, I reckon she will do well. In my opinion, she has a higher chance in winning than Spyros does, but I could be proven wrong. And who will be proving me wrong? Myself. Yeah. So, up next we have Mortax the Skeleton Warrior. Now, um, in round one, Mortax uh, destroyed Grashkor. And in round two, Mortax killed Scalamanx. Um, now, in my opinion, um, I really want Mortax to win. I really do. But, however, I honestly believe he probably won't win. Because even though I really want Mortax to win, I think there's one other beast in this set of seven which I believe will conquer um, Mortax. I hope I get proven wrong so then Mortax could win. But chances are, I reckon there's a beast that can beat Mortax. And that beast is one of these four. Um, but other than that, Mortax is a, a fam very formidable fighter. Um, has proven to be... Uh, to go all guns a blazing, or <laughs> cypher blazing. And also do a reference to a TV show that I like. Especially against Salamanx, Scalamanx. So, <laughs> that's pretty funny. I'll be honest, I liked that. Um... If I was to be brutally honest or a bit blunt, Mortax may, may, this is a very, may, depending who his opponent is, may make it through to round three, uh, make it through to round four. But um, if he does, I'll be over the moon. Um, if I was to pick one, uh, actually I'll get to that later. But yeah, Mortax, I hope, does make it as far as he can because I really want to see Mortax win. Uh, up next, we have Raksha, the Mirror Demon. Now, um, in round one, Raksha killed... Uh, oh, where is it? Yeah, in round one, Raksha killed Rivera in episode two. And um, in round two, uh, killed Jakara in the very last episode I did as well. Um, so, this beast has the powers of the original six beasts, um, well, I guess the abilities of the shield tokens, can create fireballs, and just by the looks of it alone, very defensive. Um, personally, Raksha is a walking death machine, really. Um, as we saw in the last episode that he was in, uh, going against Jakara. He can he he can be hit. Let's say from Jakara's axe, swing it, hits his arm, I believe it did, and the back of his leg. Blood was spilt. Uh so even though as I said he's defensive, he's not immortal. Um and that may be his weakness. Because with the abilities he has, and um, the, yeah, with the abilities he has, he may be um, exploited for his um, weak spots, which is basically underneath, which is basically underneath his chest plate. I just realised he's basically wearing a golden armour, kind of, um, which is underneath his chest plate, um, where his fur is. If that gets exploited, he's not coming back up. Simple as. Uh, moving on, we got uh, Falcor, the Coil Terror. This one, I am really happy to have made it through to round three. Um, in round one, Falcor just killed Yakarix, and in round two, <sighs> obliterated Vedra. 
Um, there was no way Vegeta was beating uh, Falcor. Um, now, with that fight, uh, I knew Falcor was going to win against Vegeta because there was no way Vegeta was going to win. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Vegeta, but come on. Wake up and smell the, um, well, wake up and smell Falco's acid. Um, I think uh, Falco has a very solid chance to make it through to round four. And um, I think has a very good chance against the majority of the beasts remaining. Um, I would say his weakness is the fact that as his acid, the acid he... Um, has isn't shot out like Torpix or isn't short, shot out of his throat like Torpix or shot out of his teeth like Malix. Why do they rhyme? Uh, um, but it's actually like from drops of saliva coming from Falco's teeth, uh, meaning he actually needs to bite into his enemies just to get the acid to seep in. Why did I look like, why did I make that expression when I said that? Made the acid seep in. If he doesn't bite his opponent or can't, he's going to have a tough time. So, an, a beast with armour, like Mortax or Raksha, may have a chance to not get beaten by Falcor due to their armour protecting them from his fangs. But if Falcor can find a way underneath that, underneath the um, armour, or if he's lucky enough to dissolve the armor with his um, acid when trying to bite into it, causing it to just break through and go into the beast, then he may stand a chance. But that at the moment is probably one of Falco's greatest weaknesses, and if it's exploited, he's not going to make it through. Moving on to the penultimate. Uh, penultimate of the final seven beasts, we have Kyrax the Metal Warrior. The Metal Warrior. In round one, Kyrax. Um, hold on, I need to find it now. Kyrax um, killed Ospira, and in round two, uh, killed Magraw. So rather okay beasts. Uh, I would say Ospira is more of the challenging one. As it was kind of like a wizard slash witches slash warlock slash whatever's duel against each other. As they both had powers. One of lightning, one of fire. Uh, lightning prevailed. Um, but I think with uh, Kyrax's abilities of lightning powers. I think that's going to help a lot for Kyrax. And maybe exploit um, a couple weaknesses like. Because Mortax and Raksha especially need to get... Well, okay, Mortax mainly needs to get close up to his opponents just to attack them. But with uh, Spyros and Raksha, they don't need to get close. They just need to get really... They just need to aim really well. So, um, with the beasts that need to get up close, Kyrax can take advantage of that and just get out of their reach or keep running away from them and attacking from a distance. In which case, eventually, they'll go down. Um, or unless Kyrax runs out of breath, then he's going down. But the thing is, though, even though Kyrax may not be um, the best fighter physically, like Magrol was, but he beat Magrol, he had the advantage against them for his long-distance attacks. And I'm not saying he's fragile up close, because he's made of metal. He can absorb metal as well and use it against them. Plus, I need to reread Kyrax about this, or I'm going to ask Lucas, but I'm guessing he's probably not going to know, so I'm going to need to rewatch my review about it anyway. But I believe Kyrax can shape his hands into weapons as well, which I really hope he can do. Because then that would be brilliant. Because then I can really ima use my imagination there. Um, but if not, then I'll stick to um, what we got here. Um, but 
I'm not... Kyrax is no pushover. And it's going to be a tough one to beat. I will say that. Up next, we have Verak the Storm King. The final beast I'm going to be talking about today. Well, for this video. And, um, as of all honesty, um, this one, uh, is the most defensive, in my opinion, as of all of them. Now, uh, for round one, Verak killed Okawa, and in round two, killed Ferrok. Um, now, out of all of these beasts for who they've beaten, Verak, in my opinion, has the most least impressive beats. As, no offence to Ferrok and Okawa, because they're both great beasts. They are kind of pushovers compared to this. Um, let, well, Ferrok, for example, definitely stood no chance against Verak. Okawa was having the strength of the storm that Verak brings with him. Like, Okawa's tiny! Tiny compared to Verak. There's no way he was going to be able to do much. Ferrok, I was, okay, was a bit bigger. And did put up a decent fight against Verak. But at the end of the day, water beats fire. Fire doesn't beat water. Yeah, I play Pokemon. Yeah. Um, Verak, in my opinion, is, as I said, the most defensive beast. Did have the most unimpressive victories. But that doesn't change the fact he does have a really good chance in winning. Um, now, out of these beasts, the one I want to win is Mortax. However, the one I think will win will be Kyrax. The one that... Um, now, the reason why I say Kyrax is because he has the advantage of long distance attacks on his side... Plus his wings. Plus he's a rather decent physical fighter as well. Um, for some beasts like Verak. Up like Verak and to an extent Mortax. Get up close fighting him. Maybe Cressa as well. Getting up close fighting with Kyrax. Yes he may not win. But um, on the upside though. If he can get far enough away from them. He can win. Uh, now, out of these seven beasts, the one I want to see make it straight through to round four without fighting. Now, um, I don't care what Lucas has to say. It's not going to be Cressa because Cressa's already skipped round two. And um, me and Lucas had this agreement when Tusk made it past round two without fighting. We're not having the same beast skip around. If Kreta makes it through to round three, there'll be four. Yeah, there, there would be four beasts remaining. But if there's five remaining, Kreta will not be skipping that round. He Kreta's there for the long haul now. Um, so no matter what he says, Kreta's not skipping any more rounds. Um, until the next season. But <laughs> other than that, um, now out of the remaining six, obviously I like to see Mortax skip. But, um, like with the last season, the victor didn't skip a single round. And, yeah, technically that couldn't be controlled due to randomised, and that was, like, how the cookie crumbles. So, the winner could have skipped a round um, of this series, can skip a round. But, um, I honestly want to see Falcor go through to the next round about fighting. Um, apart from the biased reason that I love snakes, and I'm born in the year of the snake, and I could be a Slytherin, uh, <laughs> I really don't believe Falcor will win in round three, and, um, I would like to see Falcor make it to the top four, um, it, it'll be really nice to see that, uh, chances are I'm probably not going to be able to pre predict that right, because it's one in six chance, I know, it's, I know there's seven beasts, but it's one in six. Kreta's not making it through, remember? So one in six. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Falcor. I'm sticking with Falcor. Um, if it's not Falcor, then it's probably going to be... Oh, 
If it's not Falcor, it's Spyros. Um, and I'm only saying Spyros because I feel like I'm having this instinct that's going to be Spyros. And when I say instinct, I mean this is the same instincts I had when I was recording those. My prediction for the results of Britain's Got Talent the Champions or America's Got Talent the Champions. I was right with the winner for that. This is the same instincts I'm getting. And if Spyros ends up being that beast that skips round three, then I need to trust that instincts. Because I'm feeling the same connection with this. And if it's Spyros, then I need to listen to it because this can seriously help me. But with that being said, you got to hear my opinion on who I want to win, who I think will win, and who I want to skip round three, and who I think will win, who will skip round three. But with that being said, that's all for this time. If you like what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press that little notification bell down in the corner below. I was going to do a Series 25 Beast of You, uh, Series 26 Beast of You, but I'm deciding against it though, as um, this one of the few times I'm actually home alone. I just got home from work. I'm absolutely shattered. I'm going to upload these videos and I'm going to. I'm going to hit the hay. I'm going to get a nap. Because um, I got a call with Lucas in a few hours. I'm going to try and get catch some Z's before I have to be up and um, call Lucas. Not saying like it's a chore. But um, he'd rather I be in a call with him to see um, his new Lynx series episode. And I can't help but understand that because it's his series. I review it. He wants to know my opinion of it right off the bat. And we got a few other stuff that we need to do as well. So, go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to be tired for that, basically. So, with that being said, I already said the outro. Till then, peace out.